Hey everybody, it's Monkey Puzzle, and I'm back to recording. It's been at least a week. I'm here on my balcony on our modded server. Uh, right now, I'm just uh, keeping an eye on a friendly neighborhood, Trent. Uh, I really like these guys, the Trents and the Ints. Uh, it's too bad they're always hostile. I would imagine tree people having a bit more equanimity, but that's how it is in the game. I still appreciate them. And yeah, I didn't record in at least a week. I had a big project in real life I had to finish, and it culminated on a Wednesday, so a bunch of my time is freed up. I had a consulting gig I was doing, designing a intensive rooftop farm on a building that's about to be built. But the building won't be built for at least a year now, so uh, freed up for that for the moment. And I got a lot more time to play around in games. <laughs> I have plenty of real life stuff going on still, but yeah, I'm going to try to whip out a few episodes right now. Started the episode with that little clip of the zombie pigmen again, and whenever I'm not on the server for a while, they tend to build up near the portal. And I know I've shown that before, but this time it was just so extreme. <laughs> I had to show it one more time to continue that theme. So I have a number of things in mind today to do, and some of them will be preparing probably for the next episode. But uh, for now, I got a little thing over here I wanted to show you real quick. Uh, I was just working on developing, automating a tree farm. And this is just a little single prototype here using some uh, autonomous activators from Thermal Expansion. These are the first ones of these I've ever made. And they give plenty of opportunity for automating yourself. They do all kinds of stuff that a player can do. They can left click and they can right click and they can sneak or not sneak. And they can rotate between all the different things you put in here. And they can aim high, low, level. Um, so I want to play with these a lot. They just seem like a fun way to automate things without using the all-in-one blocks. Like I know I could set up a farm real easy with Mine Factory Reloaded. But that's already done for me. That's just like getting a Lego set that's already got directions and you put it together and there it is, which is fun too. I do that, but hey, I want to try this. So um, I tried doing that this with these block update detectors, the this one and the advanced one, uh, which are like the bud switches in, Minecraft, in vanilla Minecraft. And... It just, for this, it's that they would be harder to use than I thought because it's not just a matter of going from the sapling to the log. There's apparently there's like three stages of saplings in between the log and the sapling. And I counted a total of four updates, including the planting of the sapling, um, to get there. And you'd have to use all this fancy uh, Project Red stuff to count the number of pulses and not do anything until you get to four. And then if you get off sequence, it could be very difficult. So instead, I'm using a turtle who doesn't have a tool. See, no tool. He doesn't actually do any work. He just sits here and he compares uh, whatever is in front of him to whatever's in these two uh, of his slots there. He's going back and forth right now and he is waiting for this tree to grow. Uh, but I'm also trying to do this in a way that has the least impact on the server as possible. And right now you see this autonomous activator is doing its thing. It's doing its thing now because this turtle thinks this is not a sapling anymore. And that's kind of an issue. Uh, let's grab a sapling out of here. Apparently, when a sapling hits a growth stage, it's no longer a straight sapling anymore. See, if we break this, it plants one. This redstone has now turned off. This autonomous activator is chilling uh, because this is a normal sapling. But as soon as it has enough time to hit one growth stage, it's not going to compare to this anymore. Um, and then it's going to think it needs to plant another one. So if we want to look at the program here, I know this isn't the most exciting. <laughs> I'll only do this for a second, but I actually find this part really interesting. So I called it startup um, so that it would start up whenever the game does. And this is what I wrote so far. There's basically two different things going on here. And I'm just relearning again how to program turtles because I got away from it a little bit and I actually have had to look up all the commands uh, as I go along here so 
two main sections while well, true do just keeps this big loop happening so that it's always doing this stuff and down here this first bit is the turtle selects slot one and then compares it uh, to what's in front of it if turtle dot compare that's what that does and if it's true then on the left it gives a redstone output this is what that does the rs dot set output you could just as well write redstone right here redstone dot this and it would work as well and if it's not true if it's not a log in front of it then it sets it to false and that's that little redstone signal you saw coming out of the left and then down here it's doing it on the bottom it selects slot two um, and it asks if what's in front of it is a sapling and if that's false then it sends the redstone output out the bottom and it uh, that should plant a sapling and we discussed what's wrong with that so what I'm gonna do right now is instead let me get rid of this whole bottom part and just try to do this thing in one operation instead of checking for logs and checking for saplings uh, we're gonna try to do it so that if there's a log it's gonna do a whole sequence of operations at one time so hopefully this is interesting for you guys I think the programming actually has real-life applications and it's forcing me to learn some so uh, but I promise I only do this for a few minutes and then we'll go do something else so let me see let me get to the end of this else statement we're not going to do that anymore so instead it's going to select its first slot this one with the logs in it and then oh by the way I fill this up so it won't collect more things in here and then okay so if what's in front of it is a log then it's going to set the redstone output on its left to true um, and it's going to do some other things so let's make that sleep for uh, 10 now I think these stand for ticks I'm not sure not actual seconds so that would be 10 ticks a half a second that's equal to a button press let's see if that's enough to make the tinkers construct uh, lumber axe chop that down so we might have to change that it's gonna sleep for 10 and that should eliminate the log uh, so then the rs dot set output uh, and the capitaliz capitalization is important um, left will become false so it turns it back off and then it's going to do the output on the bottom to plant the tree and we might want to put a thing um, to check if there is a tree after this but this might be enough too so this is going to be the bottom and we're going to set that to true and I don't know how long this has to be let's say let's make it pause for a tick uh, might need to be longer uh, if if so I can change that um, and then the we'll set the output we'll turn it back off and then I'm gonna pause for a moment and think about what I did off camera and see if uh, I think it's gonna work and also if I can type and talk at the same time that would be also very good give me a second here okay well I think that's gonna do it I didn't make any major changes I just cleaned up the shape of things so you can see it a little bit so if there's a log in front of it then it will do all this stuff hopefully it will do all that and this end tells it that's the end of the then statement the if then do stuff and then it sleeps for a second or a, a tick rather and then this is the end of the while true do loop up there uh, every loop needs an end and the sleep uh, one hopefully I think that just keeps it from being too laggy you put that in there so it's not any faster than that I don't know if it could be maybe that could be more I don't know <laughs> I'm just learning how to do this stuff but uh, let's see if that works so we're gonna get out of here and we're gonna run startup and let's see what happens 
so it's waiting for that to grow. I'm going to help it out. Uh, that redstone signal is not on, and that one's not on. So let's get a tree. And that's cool. That was enough. Okay. <laughs> that worked, but there was a delay. So I got to play with the timing a little bit. I'll do that off camera and I'll see how I get this more streamlined. Okay, it turns out the problem there wasn't the program, but the redstone signal from here was actually hooking up with uh, the redstone dust down there. And by the way, I can't seem to get the uh, red alloy wire to connect to the turtle on the bottom, which is why I had to use the redstone dust down here. Uh, but that just connects underneath uh, with a repeater, two more alloy wire uh, to that autonomous activator right there. And this is a vacuum hopper, by the way. It's an open blocks uh, item, or block or item, or whatever it is you call it, that sucks stuff up from around it. And it's picking up the, uh, the logs and the saplings and <laughs> some of the other stuff I break. Uh, it's not I positioned ideally. I think I'm going to need to... Um, put some more around and but uh, that's just a nicety we can fix that later but I was just trying to get this to work so my program should work and then it turned out also that these are actual seconds not ticks so I counted and it took about three seconds for the output to make the activator chop down the tree so that might be even more than we need but let's see if that works so we're gonna save that we're gonna exit and we're gonna run it and see how this does. Okay, so there's a tree there. And right now I've got it so that this is just letting the trees grow naturally. We don't have a constant supply of bone meal yet. Later on I'll change that. Um, but let's get it going. That just activated. That got chopped down. That turned off. And the tree got planted. So there we go. I can just let this run now. And I pretty much have an automatic tree farm. It's only one tree, uh, but I could set up more of these. The problem with doing a line of trees at this point is I've got three things need to face one block. Uh, perhaps these could go on top of each other and I could change that aim level, high or low, and make that work. But uh, that was enough of this for now. I just wanted to show you guys what I was working on. And I'll adjust the, the vacuum hoppers later too. So that's the beginning of an automated tree farm. Now, the next thing we need to do <laughs> is go fishing. <laughs> so I've got an Invar fishing rod ready to go here. We're going to make the two different kinds of cool fishing rods I found in here. I probably noticed that this has been up. But uh, there's the regular Minecraft fishing rod, the vanilla one. There is the Invar fishing rod, which we just made, and we could probably enchant uh, with better results. There's a Mine Factory Reloaded Fisher, which will just catch fish over water. That's the, the you know, all-in-the-box automated solution, but that's a little too easy, almost a little cheaty. But then there's this, the Mine Factory Reloaded Fishing Rod, <laughs> which we're going to try right now. So let's go ahead and make one of those. Uh, first, I gotta make some of my first TNT that I've made on the server. Uh, so let's do that. I already got some sand in there. And let's go ahead and make that. So the TNT, actually, let me make this easier. And these are TNT wrapped with rubber. So we need a TNT. Uh, let's go like that. Okay, I can make 12 of them. Do -do -do, first TNT. And then I've got some rubber here to make eight. So these are uh, detonation cords used only for crafting. All right. So for every piece of TNT, you get six of those. And then we're going to need some fishing rods. So let's make eight of those. And uh, I'm not sure if... Oh, yeah, because I don't have enough room. And then, and then, to make this, uh, can we do it yet? Not quite. Uh, let me see. We had a fishing rod, we had debt cord, and we had this. Okay, there's one. And then I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> make eight more. <laughs> it's a little, I could have done this better, but I'll be right back. Okay, just finishing these up. 
these are basically going to allow us to do some uh, redneck fishing, they call it, where these explode in the water and a bunch of fish, stunned fish, float up. What do I need fish for? Well, I'm going to make you wait and see that in a minute. Um, but let's see. I don't know if we have enough in here to uh, enchant an Invar fishing rod. Uh, no, apparently not. What if we do it a little bit less? A little bit less? <laughs> oh, maybe it's not even enchantable. What? All right. Anyway, I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to go find some water and I'll meet you there. Okay. Found a lovely spot for fishing. Uh, some nice scenery. Can hang out here all day and go fishing. First, I want to see what the Invar fishing rod does. I have a feeling that it's just going to give me greater durability. Or maybe it doesn't wear out at all because it's not even showing any damage. But yeah, I think it's the same fishing mechanic. And I think uh, we're actually not in the snapshot where you can enchant poles, uh, fishing poles yet and all that stuff. So with the new fishing mechanics. So yeah, this is too relaxing. <laughs> all right, let's try the Mine Factory Reloaded Fishing Rod. Oh! <laughs> All right, there we go. That's super exciting. Um, we're supposed to get up to seven fish, but I guess I have to run all over and get them. And this is kind of slow. I think I might need to uh, be something cooler, like a dweller, where I can get all over the water really fast. Zoom. Get my fish. Uh, let me try again. Uh, hopefully I won't explode any fish that I... Uh, just caught. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> oh yes, nice and relaxful. Peaceful fishing. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to keep here, uh, keep going on with this uh, tranquil activity and I will catch up with you guys in a little bit and show you what all these fish are for. Bam! <laughs> okay, last one. <laughs> Blammo! <laughs> Being a dweller and swimming is a really weird mechanic. It's kind of like a boat. You don't have entire control of it, but uh, let's see how many fish I got. I got a few more to pick up. Uh, is that everybody? They can actually walk pretty fast on land too, but they start to drown. Uh, let me see. I've got... 68 raw fish and two cooked fish. <laughs> oh, there's still some more over here. And then uh, right next to uh, what I need this fish for, uh, well, first step, which is, oh wait, I shouldn't be a dweller anymore. I'll just be me. Um, we need to get some kitties, uh, which, okay, that's not, you know, too incredible. Oh, fish for ocelots and cats, whatever. Why? Well, uh, because my house is too quiet and I need something really annoying in it. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually I have something else in mind and I will uh, let you know uh, once we get there. Anyway, I have some ocelots to catch.
<laughs> okay. That took hours to get one. <laughs> and I could show you two hours of footage of uh, chasing this, this one around. It had a funny hat too when I was chasing it, which is how was I, I was able to keep identifying it. But uh, I think they've made it much harder than it used to be in order to uh, get ocelots into cats. So, oh my God, I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> now, I don't think it was, but I have to follow through at this point. So you saw me actually resorting to using the safari net to catch the last two. You know, this one, I actually kind of force fed it. I uh, had to just kind of sneak up on it and feed it. And that's not supposed to work. And that's what did work. Um, I had two approach me uh, in the whole two, three hours I was trying this. But they ran away before I could even feed them. Um, so according to the wiki, ocelots need a 7x7 seven seven area to be tameable in captivity so they don't feel trapped. So that's what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, I think I'll even go ahead and make it one bigger. Uh, see you in a second. <laughs> okay, there we go. We have a eight by eight. I'm gonna get over in the corner. I'm gonna right click this to release mode and I'm gonna let them go all the way on the opposite side. Okay, Let's see, there we go, there's one. And there's the other. Now let me get the fish and see if I can do it from here. Oh, that's so much better. I'm going to do it like this every time now. Oop, that one ran away. <laughs> but we have time now. It's not going anywhere. It will eventually approach me again. Okay, here it comes for the second time. Eat all the fish. Okay, <laughs> we've got three cats. Um, and I don't have any more safari nets, so I'm going to leave it at that. That should be good. I'm going to see if I can get uh, all these kitties back to my base now. Actually, I wish I had some more safari nets for that. Oh, now you guys are all friendly. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm a little passive-aggressive towards them right now. Anyway. I gotta make my way back. I know when it's there we go. Yay! I got the different kind too. Okay, now that I got that done, I didn't think I was gonna be able to, but we're doing pretty well now. We got three kinds of kitties, uh all hanging out. And now that I got all this noise pollution here, it's time to finish getting ready. And some of the things I need are, I need a silk touch excavator and I need some gravity guns. Oh, and I need some luggage too. <laughs> so I'm going to work on all those things right now. Okay. So there's four gravity guns. <laughs> Just in case, let's make a silk touch. What are these called? Silky cloth for those. Uh, and we'll get, no, we want that. One of those. Okay, so we got our silky jewel. And then you're going to go ahead and work on the excavator. There we go. Excavator, writable, reinforced too. And then let's go ahead and let's make that silk touch. All right. And like everything I do, uh, let's make it mossy. Uh, we need that. And let's put a diamond on it. Why not make it faster? And maybe an emerald. <laughs> it's gonna need to be real fast. Uh, so there we go. Let's put an emerald on it. Bang. 
And let's put a diamond on it. Ooh, that's a nice excavator. <laughs> okay, and uh, what else did I need? Oh yeah, luggage. How do you make luggage? And that's another open blocks thing. Okay, got it. Give me a second. Oh, by the way, as I'm running around uh, putting that stuff together, talk about enchanted fishing poles. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually get... Uh, I'm breaking 10 off of this. Uh, I got already got something in there. I'll just line it up. I'll let you know. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there it is. I'm breaking 10. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and make that next episode right now. Oh, let's test this one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silk Touch Excavator. Bye-bye.